Hello again, squaddies. Welcome back once again to the Fearless Slayer's Bestiary. As always, I am D. And today, decided to skip ahead to one of the end, one of the regular end games at the end of the day. We're hunting the Resikiri. The Resikiri is probably one of the most dangerous of the non-escalation beasts alongside the Shroud, for good reason. They're the two end-tier bosses before you get into escalations and trials. Now, counting its Enrage and its Aether Charge, the Resikiri has 11 attacks. Most of them are centered on the fact that it shoots light from a gem on, its, on the end of its tail. And in fact, the Bio Crystal at the end of its tail is one of its most dangerous weapons. <laughs> a lot of its attacks are actually very similar to Valamir, if you fought that if you fought that bastard. And it seems like they've got a real bug theme going on with the with the uh, radiant behemoth skills. You'll see what I mean in just a second. In fact you can see the wings right there. That's the that's the Resikiri. There you go, you see the claw slam, it just rears up, slams its two claws into the ground. It can do some damage, knock away the, the slayers around it. That right there. Uh, one thing about the claw slam is it will also use that as attack, and it's just used three different attacks. It uses the claw, the claw swipes, which basically it's just like the Karabak. It can go up to six times, though. It also uses the light carpet bombing, where it can bob back and forth, dropping light balls on you. It can do this a couple of times. This is a dangerous one. This is the Star Storm. It flies up out of the reach of melee attackers and creates a wall of balls of light. It then launches them at Slayers, and these do a t these can do a ton of damage, can some good knockback. Terrain and rolling are your best bets for dot for avoiding those. There's the tail swipe. The second one does still have a hitbox. It doesn't go fa quite as fast. I'll I'll go into the details about how each about the tails once we're done with this fight. There's another uh, metronome, the Galactic Disc. Probably one of its most dangerous attacks. You'll notice that after the Galactic Disc and the Star Storm, the Resikiri actually gets tired. This is a big thing, because there's no boop. There is no boop on the Reza. And there's its Ether Charge. It can stay in this form for quite some time. It doesn't really gain any new attacks, but all of its light attacks gain usually more power or more fire, or more projectiles. When it's charged. Same with it same with its enrage. I might have another attack when it's when it's ether charge, I'll have to check my notes. There is Rainbow Road. Yes, I called it after after the most dangerous Mario Kart track in the game. Because why not? It fits. It can also mirror that once it starts getting lower on health. I am doing terrible. But I was gonna say a couple weeks ago when I did the exotic overview and I didn't I didn't demonstrate them, you're probably gonna see me demonstrate tra tragic echo by the end of this fight. Despite the fact that I'm actually really good at dodging. But yeah, you'll notice the Resikiri is not high on stamina. This is a big deal because it's kind of the opposite of the Shroud in that case. The Shroud can just go forever. It's the Energizer Bunny of Death. There's the Enrage. This is the biggest danger of the Enrage is the is the shields. A good strategy is kind of what we all is kind of what my team did there, where we all kind of grouped up. I tried to dodge that, but I couldn't. But yeah, you saw you see us group up and use that to our advantage. Because that way we can break those crystal the light domes a lot easier. Galactic Disc does go with 360, but it's mostly it's mostly concentrated to the front of the Resikiri. Okay, the Enrage and the Ether Charge are both over. Which is good, because again, this thing hits like a damn truck. Once again, Rainbow Road. It can mirror this so that it's got beams going both directions. And it does also do that, so... You'll notice a lot of the time, the only thing you can really hit on the Resikiri is the damn tail, because of the way it hovers.
again, luckily the Resikiri with all its firepower does have stamina issues. Oh, Death Disco, probably one of its more dangerous attacks as well, especially because most people forget that it does a Claw Slam at the end of it. It can do between 4, 6, and 8 beams. Might be able to do more, I'm not sure, because it's hard to count them. More carpet bombing. Like I said, when it's an Aether Charge, it can usually do more ball, more uh, radiant attacks in a single cat, in a single use. Another, another uh, Star Storm. This thing, this thing, this one seems to like Star Storm for some reason. Now you can actually get under this, and I'm safe right here. As long as I'm not directly under the Resicure when it lands, I'm fine. If you can get inside the, the Death Disco attack, you're pretty well fine, as long as you're not directly under the beast when it lands. Now the thing about the, the domes, with, its, with the Enrage, they're not too hard to break, but the problem is the Resicure can shoot through them. You, not so much. Another galactic disc. Good trick here is kind of angle your camera down a little bit more. All right, we've got this thing actually about half dead, and that's the problem with the carpet bombing is you don't get there's not really a mercy window. We actually got it knocked over. We actually got the crystal. We got. We broke the tail crystal. Got a radiant aether gem out of that. That's good. One of the hardest parts to get from this thing is the. Uh, I don't remember what they're called, but you can actually uh, resicure kite. Uh, the. And there we go. That looks like an. Es that can be. That is a trick one right there. So that's either an escape, or it's a trick to stop you from seeing. Actually, I'm gonna go over here. Drop a pylon. Okay, so we've seen most of this thing's attacks. Let me tab over my... Oh, right, I forgot about that. The little blink-out thing that it does can also pull you in. But yeah, like I said, the Resicure's attacks go straight through these domes. It There's no defense. And as it gets lower on HP, you're going to notice there's a lot of firepower coming our way. Oh, I warped into that. Yes, the uh, metronome on this thing does have an, a secondary tail swipe. And there's the double rainbow road. Normally it doesn't go as long as the as the single one, but it can go quite a ways. There's Death Disco. I'm going to get in the middle here. And then just blitz. To give you an idea of just how strong this thing is, outside of, again, outside of the uh, escalations, yeah, see, there's the four beam. But outside of escalations, the only thing potentially stronger than this bastard is the shroud, and I just went down. 
And there's the, you see, there's the ability of Tragic Echo. I'm suddenly a sh an invincible shadow monster. I have access to all of my abilities like this. But anything. Anyway, one thing about this is, uh... Normally, in a in a hunt, you have three self-revives. Against the Resikiri and the Shroud and anything at heroic difficulty, which is 17 plus, you get one. So, I can't go down again. And get myself, at least not get myself back up. Alright, we're actually pretty safe right here because a lot of its attacks are will be blocked by terrain. Or a lot of its light attacks are blocked by terrain. Not all of them, of course. Get behind this tree. We're actually gonna get this. We're gonna get the kill. Yeah, that skid, I don't know what that is. I don't think it's a, directly an attack. I think it's the Resicure getting desperate. That's it. We get the kill. Okay, we're gonna go, like I said, I'm gonna save the tells and the stuff after this. Okay, so I got an A. I actually did pretty good. I've gotten an S on that before. One thing I'm gonna say is that the Resicure seems to have a bug. I don't know if it's just the Reza, but it's something I've been dealing with a lot recently, where I'll be stuck in my spawn point at the start of the map. I go and unstick myself using the help, I'm help my character stuck command in the help menu, and it doesn't, after that, like my weapon, my Hold on a second, I'm making sure it's still recording, because uh, Shadowplay does pause recordings during loading screens sometimes. But uh, I will go, like, I'll go and I'll fight the Reza. Problem is, my weapons do basically no damage. I don't gain Aether Charge. I don't gain Charge on my weapon or my Lantern, and my Lantern tap ability doesn't work. So that does happen sometimes. I've sent in a bug report about it. I'm probably going to do another one in a minute, because it happened. <coughs> Excuse me, it happened the first time I tried to record this. Alright, let's get over here. And we'll talk our way through the various abilities of the Resicuri. Alright, so we'll start with the basic ones. I know I'm on a pause menu. Actually, I need to... Let me do something real quick, see if I can see if this works. There we go. So there's a minor hiccup there as I hit borderless window, but actually that doesn't really help me. Anyway. Like I said, the Resicuri has 11 attacks that's counting the Enrage and the Aether Charge. Why is this... Why is... Oh, great. Okay, word. Okay, word work with me here. Alright, the Aether Charge. Uh, it will raise up a little bit and then drop down very violently, and this can knock you back and damage you. It buries the tip of its tail on the ground a lot like the Karabak does for the infestation attack. It looks forward for a second before it fully activates the Aether Charge. It is best seen by the wings, claws, eyes, and tail gem. If it's still a lot, if it's still if it's unbroken, the tail gem of the Resicuri will start glowing bright white. Like I said, it doesn't really seem to gain too many new attacks. It just upgrades most of its already existing radiant abilities. Next up, the Enrage. The Resicuri spins up into the air a little bit then does that claw slam straight into the ground very fast. This It basically doesn't move from the spot that it's going to enrage on. On the slam is when the, the pulse of red ether comes off of it and the enrage actually starts. The biggest danger here is, is the fact that once it enrages, it traps all slayers in a radiant dome, in a dome of hardened light. You saw that a couple of times in the fight we just came out of. This blocks all of your attacks, but the Resicure can still hit through them, it can move through them. It's All of its attacks will go straight through these domes, not a problem. 
One, one good strategy here is do kind of what you saw with the first activation of the Enrage in that fight, was have, a, have your Slayers kind of two-man up. We didn't really attempt to do this, it just kind of happened. Because if you can all hit, if you got two people smacking at a dome, it goes down really fast. Next up, the Galactic Disc, probably one of its more common attacks, where it's it raises itself a little bit farther off the ground, with only like the last third quarter of its tail on the ground still, and creates a number of number of tiny lights in front of it. You saw this quite a few times. Most of them will be in front of it, some of them will be behind it. It then launches them at the Slayers in a very large shotgun spread. Like I said, some of them can go backwards. These do some really good damage and some good knockback. It does an increased amount of these in Aether Charger and Rage and when its health gets low, which kind of is a pseudo enrage on most things. A lot of these things do have soft enrages at this at the heroic level, when their when their health gets down below half, and then it gets up, gets even worse when they get down to a quarter. I don't have hard data on that, so don't quote me. I'm just telling you what my observations are. Now the best ways to deal with this are to, like I said, angle your camera down just a little bit and watch the lights because they will only go in a straight line. You can dodge these without ever rolling because if you walk. If you pay attention and walk, you can just avoid them that way. Another good way is put terrain between you and the ball because they don't go over terrain. They'll hit, they hit a rock or a tree, bam, they're done. This will also usually the Resicure kind of tired. You'll see it, its claws hang down and it kind of bobs side to side for a minute, really looking exhausted. It's actually pretty easy to tell. Next up, the Star Storm. We saw this a couple times as well, where the Resicure flies really high up into the air. The only thing that's going to hit this thing at this point is ranged attack, so Austin Repeaters. The the Hadoken attack of the Strikers probably could do it. Your Pike Blast, which I like to use. Maybe something with the Chain Blades? I'm not entirely certain. I'm not as good with those. It creates a wall of lights, just like the one from the Galactic Disc, and then launches them. This the number of these things does increase as it enrages and it ether charges, and it knocks you up quite a bit if you're not careful. It does pretty similar damage to the Galactic Disc and Knockback, and you can avoid it in more or less the same way. This is a little bit more difficult to avoid without rolling because it's coming from above. And again, this will often leave the Resicure quite tired. Next up, the one that, like I said, I named it after a Mario Kart level because it fits is Rainbow Road. It'll fly off a good distance usually, you can get close to it, but it sets itself so that it cannot be hit by melee because it's hovering and it's got its tail gem pointing at usually a single slayer. It'll focus on one slayer, it's occasionally hard to tell because, it's, because of the distance, but as you get closer it will actually rotate to follow its target. Now it fires a sequence of light beams, usually it starts on its left, your right if you're facing it, but it can start on the other side as well. And it will move them across the arena in a sequence. All the beams are active hitboxes no matter what part of the arc they're on. You can roll through this or you can avoid them using cliff faces, but you gotta be like smack up against the cliff to avoid this, so that's not a guarantee depending on what arena, what light, what island you're on. As the fight goes on, as you saw, it, it happened I think once in that fight. And it can also do this during Aether Charges and Enrages, but it will never do it during the first ones, as we saw. Well, not, I'm not going to say never, because that's a bad idea. But as it Aether Charges and Enrages, and as the fight goes on and it loses health, it can actually mix this up by creating mirrored sets of beams that'll just kind of go at the exact same time. It's That is very dangerous, because you, there's not really a mercy window on these. And it can it can go... A number, I've seen it go up to, like, two set, two to three sets back and forth, so... It can do this for quite a while. Next up, the Death Disco, which is a stupid name. I'm aware I come up with really dumb names for some of these attacks, but it's what I call them. It spins, rises up out of reach of melee attacks. Its tail is aimed straight down this time, and it doesn't move off. It then creates either... It usually creates between four, six, four, six or eight. It's always an even number, as far as I can tell. In a tight polygon on the ground. And they'll quickly spread out, widening. It can go really wide, and then it will start. It'll and it'll do this while it, well, and the beams will spin in a circle. Then it'll actually come back in and tighten up, going the opposite direction of the spin. Now it can you can avoid this if you can get inside the beams for the most part, because if it tightens too much or you just don't have the room, you can still get hit by them 
even getting inside. Also, this does run the in the danger of the Resicuri will f always finish Death Disco with a Claw Slam directly underneath it. This doesn't have a huge AoE, but it does have a decent one, so be, pre be prepped to run from there. Alright, next page. Maybe if Word will work with me. There we go. Okay, last couple of attacks. The Metronome. Basically the same tell as the Karabakh, where it'll just kind of hover for a second and then do... It'll do... This is where the Red Security is actually different, though. It'll do one set of claw swipes going forward in one direction, stop, turn, and go in a different direction. It can actually swipe up to a total of six times. It will sometimes mix it up, just do two, sometimes do four, other times it'll do six. Six is the most I've ever seen it do. It's not difficult to avoid, though. As long as you're not directly in front of it, even then you can roll straight through it. Although you gotta be careful because the metronome with the Resicuri does have a hitbox on the thing's tail. So it has an extra hitbox you gotta watch out for. Next, the Claw Slam. Simplest attack this thing's got. It rises up, sometimes with a spin, and then slams straight down. If it moves at all, it's really not very much. This has some good knockback, but this is also how it enrages, how it activates its enrage, how it activates its ether charge, how it ends the death disco. It ends a lot of stuff with the claw slam. Next up, the tailspin. We saw it a couple of times at the very beginning of the fight. It'll pause for a moment, then sweep its tail out in a wide circle. I mean, a wide one. It goes because this thing because you look at the resicure. It's about eighty percent. Actually, it's about it's probably about 70 percent tail by volume. The entire tail really seems to be a hitbox on this, but you can roll through the tail, it's not that difficult. The second rotation, it usually will stop after that one, if it does one at all. It will sometimes face the direction it started in, sometimes it will face backward from where it started, kind of a hit or, hit or miss on that. The second can still hit you, the second spin can still hit you even though the tail curls in and cuts down on the, wet, on the width of the attack. It's just a lot slower, so you do have to time your dodge a little bit better. Next up, we got two more to go. The Blinding Ascension. We saw this. This is the same as... This is how the Resicuri retreats, but it's not always a retreat. This is where it gets tricky. It'll tailspin and sp and spawn light bombs near. I don't remember that, but anyway. Sorry, this is a... Some of this data is old. Instead... And it'll vanish, blight, whiting out your screen entirely. Now, keep in mind, the Blinding Ascension doesn't always mean retreat. Keep an eye on your danger meter. If the danger meter goes down, then it's retreated. If not, it's just messing with you. It can also use this as a vacuum attack to pull all Slayers in, at which point it will also put a Light Dome around you. You saw that at the start of the second round, because we were all healing up, and bam, we got teleported. So Blinding Ascension is pretty dangerous in terms of you gotta know where you are. And then, finally, the light carpet bombing. It starts bobbing side to side at roughly its regular height. After that, it'll start, it'll drop, it'll bob to one side, and then go back the other way, and on that second, on returning to where it started, it'll drop some of the light balls, like you see from Galactic Disc or Star Storm, roughly a 30, 45 degree angle. Hard to dodge, because it, they don't, they stagger you, but they don't knock you down. It'll repeat the, it can repeat this several times. This can if it repeat if it does it once, it does not tire out. If it does it more than about twice, it does tire out. Okay. So that was a fun one to wait. This is a fun way to return. Remember, the Resicuri has eleven attacks, and it gets pretty dangerous. Shadow uh, umbral weapons like my Stalker Spite here are great for that. Because, again, uh, umbral damage or darkness damage, if you want to go for that, does extra damage to Radiant Behemoths. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I did. It's good to be back doing guides. I like I like trying to help people. That's what I do. If you did enjoy, feel free to drop a like on the video. You can also leave a comment down below if you have anything you'd like to say. And if you want to keep up with me, never miss any of my current series or my next guide video, then feel free to click the subscribe button down below to join the squadron. That helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. As for that squaddies, I have been D. We face down the Resicuri. I still need to do a Valamir guide. 
and soon we're going to be facing the Lord of Darkness itself, outside of Escalation, with the Shroud. But that's not come. That's not now. That's soon. Until next time. Good night, and good gaming. <laughs>